Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had a great and safe Christmas Eve, Christmas Day with their families at church, watching virtually. Um, I hope you all were able to get together and and be together with all of those of your loved ones and watch the service with all of us. Um, I know Christ was present. I want to say that I hope that all of you had a wonderful time with your families as you gathered. I hope that we all stayed safe and continued prayers as we continue to be virtual. We are all thinking of all of us, each and every one of us. We decided to go pre-recorded this for this uh, service rather than live streaming it because we thought that it would be better to have the the text on the screen and to be able to sing along. Um, even if we were to come together, uh, we wouldn't be able to sing. So this is a great way, with, given the circumstances, that we could actually sing to the Lord and uh, participate together uh, in our worship of lessons and carols. So I hope you all enjoy. God bless. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who lived in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. For the yoke that was weighing upon them and the burden upon their shoulders, thou hast broken into pieces, O God, our renewer. Let us pray. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer of lament. Show yourself to us and to all our siblings of all faiths and nationalities who live with the painful memories of loss. Provide us with strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who shares in our joys and our sorrows, in our death and our new birth, and in our despair and promise of salvation. Amen. Seven hundred years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah spoke to the people of the ancient Jewish nation. As Isaiah spoke, the people faced some of the darkest days of their long history. Spiritual decay and political corruption had spiraled out of control to the point where the northern kingdom of Israel had been conquered by the neighboring Assyrians, and many of the Jewish people had been taken captive and led away into exile in Assyria. And now the southern kingdom was being threatened by the Babylonians. Those were fearful days, and the long-ago promise of a Messiah first heard in the Garden of Eden was then repeated to the great patriarch Abraham, and then reiterated by the prophets through the centuries. That promise of a Messiah, a descendant of David, who would come to save his people that seemed a distant memory. But in Israel's days of desperation, Isaiah was called by God to speak again of the Messiah. And so it was during that turbulent time that Isaiah spoke these words. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God How could it be that a virgin would bear a child? Who had ever heard of such a thing? The ancient prophet Isaiah had foretold it, but who believed it would actually happen? 700 years passed after Isaiah's proclamation, and the strange words of the prophet were all but forgotten until the angel Gabriel appeared to a young woman in the town of Nazareth. A reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, that it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
third lesson is from the second chapter of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. of mysteries is that God, who created the world, became man and lived among us. He sought not the kings and the queens of this world, nor the rich and the influential, but instead associated with the poor and despised and diseased. He came to seek and save the lost. Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world, to redeem each one of us, to restore us to our status as beloved sons and daughters, siblings of God, by forgiving our sinful and selfish rebellion. 
He lived a mean and spare existence, with nowhere to lay his head, weeping with those who wept, rejoicing with the joyful, healing the sick, raising the dead, and forgiving all who sought reconciliation with God. History has never seen anything else like it, and will not until he comes again. Our next reading is from John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. Word of God, word of life. What child is this who lays to rest on Mary's Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregations who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. We especially lift up to you today Carolyn Holmes, Kelly Utter, Andy Jones, Nancy Wilson, Bruce Souter, Barb Johnson, Ruth Hauser, Athena Adams, Michelle Grubb, Glenn Martin, Kathy Spilker, Anna and Carl Ziders, the family and friends of Beth, Herb, and all those whom we name in our hearts to you now. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For John, Apostle and Evangelical, and all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift those and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters and all siblings in Christ, let us join our hearts with the ancient church in prayer as we are sent out with Christ's light within us. Look upon us, O Lord, and let all the darkness of our souls vanish before the beams of your brightness. Fill us with your holy love and open to us the treasures of your wisdom. All our desire is known to you, therefore perfect what you have begun and what your Spirit has awakened us to ask in prayer. We seek your face. Turn your face to us and show us your glory. 
Then will our longing be satisfied, and our peace shall be perfect. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold throughout the Now go in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.